Project Explosive Hamster is taking flight behind me, and we've got some more parts here that I want to show you guys. Just got a couple of boxes in the mail. This is from one. One is from these guys. And what we're doing today on Dirt Gear TV is we're going to be looking at safety. Did he just say safety? That's right, guys. Safety. Doesn't this guy know this is Dirt Gear TV? Yes, I know this is Dirt Gear TV. We're discussing safety. And really, it's not that I don't want to be safe. It's just you have to keep in mind that safety's third. Doesn't mean we don't care about safety. It just takes a third seat behind power and performance. Safety. Okay, so with as much power as I've got going through this tiny little engine on Widow here, I need this thing basically to not explode. So that's why I've installed the, uh, the master kill switch here, if in the event that something does ever happen there. Now, the second thing, and this is really the thing that's been bothering me the most regarding safety, is this guy right here. So I don't want to have anything on this fuel pump that could possibly break off. The return here is a threaded AN fitting, so that one most likely is not gonna break, but it is still going into plastic. However, the one that I'm most concerned about is the send side. Not only uh, is this made out of plastic, but this is the pressurized send side of this fuel system. So I wanna get rid of this whole plastic fuel setup here. Now, this is part number. 7084A. It doesn't have a fill neck here because I've already got my fill neck there. So all this is going to do is this is going to replace package number two. This guy is from Radium Engineering. So I decided to go with Radium Engineering because this fuel level sensor is supposedly rated for E85. The same style of level sensor, the cheap ones that you see on Amazon and eBay, supposedly they are not rated for E85. And it is about four or five times the cost of what you would typically spend on this. But if it can hold up to E85, that additional cost will be well worth it. Um, not a lot of these are. And so if they're making these themselves and they are holding up to E85, good, good for them. I mean, that's fantastic. More guys like us need these parts. And we're willing to pay a premium. I think this was about 150 bucks or something like that. So we're going to get that guy installed. Now, in order to get this guy installed over here, um, this one had to be done first, and I've been waiting on this package a little bit longer. It's just going to go anywhere where I can find room. And then, of course, that guy's going to go where the old fuel hanger is, right over here. So, got to get this guy installed. We're going to make this buggy as safe as we possibly can. I can disconnect the battery from the frame, the rest of the system. And now, also, we're going to have metal connections coming and going from the fuel tank. Nothing plastic to break. <laughs> Even the E85 took its toll on the zip tie. Look at this. This thing is almost like rubber. E85, man, it's some crazy juice. Oh, that junk on the pre-filter. 
All right, so got the fuel pump out. I'm gonna replace the filter. However, in order to clean out the pump itself, I have an idea. Follow me. Drop our happy little pump into the drink. We got our open fuel cell here. We got Mr. Sparky here. I'm gonna just let that run for about five, 10 minutes and uh, should be nice and clean. All right, I cut this thing perfect length because we are not making contact. I'll prove it. See, no contact. So we've got this nice thick wire here we're going to be using for the fuel pump. This is going to be our fuel level sender unit here. Um, this one's from Radium. This stuff's RCI. And then, of course, you guys know I'm a big fan of the AEM stuff, which is the pump that we're going to be running here. Doesn't it just look so much better and cleaner? Oh, my goodness. I hated the way the other tank looked. Um, but we got our new fittings on here. This is a much cleaner setup. I am still concerned about the amount of room I'm going to have because if you remember the previous set up the turbo was just barely touching or just barely not touching the corner of the tank just realized you guys cannot see that screen whatsoever in terms of the value so this is reading voltage is all it's doing it's just it's just reading the voltage and basically what I'm telling the needle to do is based on what it's reading at zero volts and what it's reading at five volts. Now in order, I wish this were just as easy as putting zero under the zero value and putting 100 under the five volt value, but in reality, it just doesn't really work that way. So I'm using a zero value for the zero volt, and we know that's accurate because uh, zero to 90 is what the ohm is on that particular sensor. So zero is zero, so that's good. Now, the 5 volt value, what I was getting when I changed this to, let's say, change it to 100, okay? So the 5 volts, 100, that would mean uh, all 5 volts are getting through there, but if you remember, having a resistance value interrupt that 5 volt reference signal, it's never going to be 5 volts. So as I lift the sensor, that is about half a tank of gas right there, and see it's only reading 20, and now I bring it all the way to the top and it's barely up to 50. Drop it back down, and we're back down to zero. So that's not exactly what we want with that one. Um, so if I come in here and I modify this value to 210, um, and let's see if 210 gets us closer to where we want to be. I'm kind of guesstimating where I think 50% full is. Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere there. So all the way up, this is as far as I can push it up to the top of the tank is reading 98%. So we're getting very, very close here. Long story short, guys, the resolution on this is not great. And that's just because of the voltage and the ohms that I am choosing to use here. So this will work just fine in practical use because if I ever see this thing dipping down into, say, this range, that's danger territory, so we don't want to ever do that. And that's really all I need from a fuel gauge. I don't need it to read 1% every time I touch this thing. It just has to be close enough to where I will be alarmed if this starts to drop below a certain point. All right, so that being said, I'm very happy with this as the end result. That means at least I will now have a functioning fuel level gauge. And anybody that's driving this dune buggy, if you ever meet me out at an off-road park or, or take the dune buggy for a spin, um, just please keep in mind that if you're getting down into this red range, 
that's the danger territory. You don't want to bring it out beyond that. All right, so finally, have a fuel tank and system set up that I can live with. Very happy with the setup. It's only taken me two years to get here. But at least we're here. So thanks for watching Dirt Gear TV, and I'll see you guys in the next one.